Attention, please have your form of identification ready. Next. I said Shoot. next. I am so sorry. I think I forgot my passport. Oh, that's okay. Do you have any other form of identification? Driver's license, IP address, library card? Library card. Correct. We only need one piece of identifiable information to match against our records and verify your identity. And how exactly does that work? I will tell you. It's a process called identity resolution, which may low-key be the digital advertising industry's most straightforward term. It is what it sounds like, taking different forms of identification and resolving them to a single identity. You know, it's one of those things we talk about, but not everybody is actually clear on what it means. As we move around the internet, we get assigned different IDs. So if I'm on a browser, a Chrome browser, I'm gonna get a cookie. I might get a mobile ID from a mobile app. I might get an IP associated with me on a CTV uh, implementation. So ID resolution is really about how do you take those different IDs, stitch them together until you can understand who the common user is. So I think of identity resolution in some ways as a Rosetta Stone. It's how you take disparate pieces of an individual and pull them together into a single identity. Cool, but how? Actually, before that, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Did you know more than half of marketers have adopted natural language processing software like chatbots? Oh yeah? Where are you getting that from? Oh, it's in a report called The State of AI by Digiday Plus Research. Interesting. Can you send me the link? Sorry, it's only for Digiday Plus members. Of course it is. Let me guess, that's a subscription product? Yes, but it's a pretty good deal. Digiday Plus members get access to exclusive research, weekly member-only newsletters, and unlimited access to Digiday's coverage of the media and marketing industries. Wow. Is there a link where I can learn more? Yep, just go to digiday.com slash subscribe. Okay, back to identity resolution. Here's the breakdown. Person visits a website which drops a first party cookie to tag them as U123. Next, a person pulls up an app on their phone that grabs their device ID and tags them as UABC. Then, our hero turns on their connected TV, which checks their IP address and tags them as H789. These identifiers are then connected, or resolved, to create what's called an identity graph, also known as an audience graph, mapping the different identifiers associated with someone. An identity graph, it's usually a, a database, basically, uh, where there's usually a list of you know, people or households and any ID uh, or piece of information that is identity related that is connected to those individuals. It's really about having each one of these IDs connected to your audience graph in a way that you're able to, through enough signals in a statistically significant way, be able to determine that this user belongs to ramp ID such and such, or trade desk UID 2.0 such and such, or ID5 such and such. Here's the important question though. How the hell is anyone supposed to be able to know that U123 and UABC and H789 are all the same person? There has to be a framework that is being used to resolve these signals into, you know, a household or you know a user profile or a persona and whether you call it an audience graph whether you call it an audience spine to me doesn't really matter it's 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 more about having that infrastructure and framework that is being used to do the the reconciliation yeah you've got all these ids running around the internet and so we gotta we gotta wrangle them in and so what we do is we bring an id spine and what that is is a common platform where we can bring all these uh, IDs into a space and bring in additional data from third parties like a credit reporting uh, company and really start to shape the identity of the user. Now, if you're anything like me, you may be starting to lose the thread. We've got identifiers, identity graphs, and now identity spines. What the hell is the difference between an identity graph and an identity spine? The spine is the, is the partnerships and the data sources that you're bringing to bear to create a graph where you've got those users identified and you understand who they are, you can then use that graph to go target them. So that's the separation. The spine is the underlying structure of the graph. The graph is what you're actually using in targeting. You might say the identity spine is the backbone of identity resolution. So you need to connect that customer ID with a device ID that allows you to leverage that information to reach the device of the person that you want to talk to, right? And so the ID spine 
will be the combination of what is my primary ID, what is the primary key in my customer database, and what are all of the IDs, the device IDs that I can that are connected to that spine, to that to that key, um, um, to make my data actionable, right? So that I can use it in the wild. Think of how you might have your driver's license, your passport, and your birth certificate all on file somewhere. Those are all forms of identity, but then there's the ultimate form of identity that seemingly everything gets mapped to, your social security number. Actually, your social security number, in a way, is what's used to resolve all these different identifiers. We just want to resolve a bunch of clues about who somebody might be. Let's say an email address in one case, um, the, a device uh, like a MAC address or some other device ID. Uh, uh, that is a clue of who's accessing, or you've got maybe a phone number, et cetera, uh, an address. And then what you're trying to say is, is all those clues about a person, are they the same person or do they represent different people? And in most cases, you have to run whatever clues you have through some uh, third-party service. Uh, there's the credit agencies or, or the credit kind of consolidators, uh, Experian, TransUnion are two you know, of the big ones. Um, and they're collecting all of that as a sort of core part of their business. And they're really trying to get all those clues about who someone is connected to a bunch of other information about the person, like, oh, you know, where they live, their income, uh, et cetera. So that, you know, somebody who's running a credit report on, on, on an individual has all that information in one place. Pause. Am I telling you that the credit reporting agencies that have access to the most sensitive form of identity are using that to let companies know that U123 and UABC and H789 are all the same person, just so some brand can avoid annoying me by showing the same ads all over the internet, or can actually annoy me by retargeting me with the same ad on every screen I own? Kinda, yeah. But it's not like the credit reporting agencies are sharing people's raw, personally identifiable information with companies, or that companies are sharing all the identifiable information they have with one another. Instead, the raw identifiable information gets wrapped into what are effectively various forms of proxy IDs that only make sense to the companies that created those proxy IDs. What ends up happening is that a lot of uh, vendors or providers themselves do a lot of work to try to stitch together, my ID ABC is your your ID 123. And that ends up creating um, a very dense and complicated graph of connections between IDs, um, which a lot of vendors have done a lot of work to try to basically simplify by um, putting hashing or encryption layers under where if you get ID ABC, then you have to ask the vendor, uh, who is this actually in my namespace? to then convert that ABC into a one, two, three, where that's only a lookup that that vendor can do. We have a process that allows us to uh, basically look at our table with our ID graph, look at a table of one of our partners, find common IDs that we have both, you know, attached to a person. And that allows us to understand, oh, this, uh, you know, ramp ID ABC is the same person as connect ID one, two, three. Uh, we don't know who the person is. We might know different things about that person, but because we have found some common keys, we can say that, you know, this person in your identity, you know, space is the same person as, you know, this one in our identity space. Uh, and so that's how we can talk to each other effectively. We're, we're establishing a translation between different IDs uh, so we can each keep focusing on our own use cases and serve our joint customers uh, by, you know, enabling data to be transmitted back and forth uh, through this, uh, you know, identity integration. For an added layer of security, companies refresh these proxy IDs to limit the possibility of someone over time figuring out the persistent identity of whoever that proxy ID is associated with. For signals that are usually permanent, like, you know, an email or a phone number, uh, in order to you know, increase security when the data is transmitted across platforms, there are additional levels of encryptions that are applied on top. Uh, and the encryption keys are the ones that rotate. Uh, so you know, it means that instead of sending a hashed email back and forth that could be intercepted and you know, used maliciously, uh, companies can send an encrypted version of that hashed email, where only the company that has the decryption keys will be able to understand 
you know, what it really means. And again, to improve security, those decryption keys get changed quite often, right? It's like when you have, uh, you know, the Authenticator app on your phone and every minute the, the six digits to log in into your account refresh. It's kind of the same concept. If this all sounds a little tenuous, or at least so complex as to be almost prohibitive to put into practice in an industry built on being able to bid on ad impressions in real time, well, you're not wrong. As much as identity resolution has a foundation in what's arguably the gold standard for identification, the system of resolving the various identifiers across companies could use some standardizing. Right now, right, if you think about this interoperability, it's all partnerships between the companies. Uh, and so what you could have is you could have an industry body come out there and say, hey, here are the rules for interoperability. Here's how IDs will connect with each other. Here's how it will work uh, outside of the bid stream. You know, here's how a brand with one ID can bring it to the other. Here's what will be the standard elements across IDs. Uh, and I think, you know, there's been a little bit of talk of this, um, but it has yet to take off.